Public transport between Zagreb and Osijek, how does it look in 2024? I decided last week going to Osijek for a business trip to do to go on the bus and then to return by train just to see how things are in reality. Going to the Zagreb bus station is always a joy. Uh, it's one of the least attractive things I think about living in, in the capital city and I really look forward to the day when it's given a proper upgrade. Now finally you can buy tickets online so that's great but when you come to the station itself the information is really really poor and you only have information about which buses are arriving not which are leaving. And so it's actually quite difficult to find your bus, especially when it gets quite busy. And my ticket didn't have any um, platform number on it. But it wasn't so busy, so I found the bus, uh, got on there. It wasn't too busy. On the bus, it was about €20 for a ticket one way. It was a very, very clean bus. It was warm. There were plugs for uh, uh, devices so I could get some work done. And it's a very straight road going to Slavonia, so we got onto the motorway quite quickly. It was actually very pleasant. It was uh, scheduled at 3 hours and 45 minutes. And then uh, we had a stop in Slavonsky Brod. At the bus station there, where we could go to the casino if you wanted to. Um, I opted to go and buy a nice warm burek for two euro. And uh, then we were back on the bus. Uh, then we left the motorway and we went and stopped in Jakovo, uh, which is famous for its magnificent cathedral at uh, 90 metres high, towering over. And then finally we came into Osijek uh, in the snow. And uh, we arrived bang on time, three hours, 45 minutes. And um, it was so refreshing to come to a nice modern bus station. Uh, this is in the east of Croatia where everything is supposed to be falling apart. It was much, much better than Zagreb bus station. They had great information about arrivals and departures and it was a much more pleasant experience uh, overall. And then after a few days in uh, Osijek, I took a train on officially the slowest passenger route in the whole of uh, the EU from uh, Osijek to Erdut and uh, that's in a separate video. And then I got back and I decided then to come back by train. So I've heard a lot of horror stories about the train from Osijek to Zagreb. A lot of jokes that if you left yesterday, you may be there by the weekend, that kind of thing. And I wasn't necessarily uh, in a hurry to get home. I just wanted to have the experience. And I was pleasantly surprised uh, by the whole experience, I have to say. Uh, ticket was €18.60. Euros and the train was uh, much, much more modern than the one I was on going to Erdut. And um, there were, again, plugs so I could get some work done. Uh, there were mo modern toilets, and uh, it was very, very clean and very warm. And uh, actually a much more pleasant experience than I remember on British trains. Not that they're that great. Having been on a train that was 25.54 kilometres an hour, it was nice to see the display showing the speed, and we got up to 60 kilometres an hour. And in order to pass the time, I was posting stuff on Facebook, and there was quite a large engagement on the trip with lots of jokes. And then we went up to 100 kilometres an hour, which was really sort of cooking with gas. And then nine minutes outside of Zagreb, up to 108, which is probably the fastest I've ever been on on a train in Croatia. And we arrived in Zagreb, bang on time. It's been quite a day. I've had a, a total of eight hours and three minutes on uh, Croatian trains. Uh, but I think I've actually come to uh, something quite unique in Croatian history. Um, I've been on three separate Croatian railway trains today, and they've all arrived on time. How many of you have done that? Uh, I have to say it's been very, very educational. Um, some good, some bad, but I'm definitely ready for a beer, so uh, see you later. I thought it was a really quite pleasant experience overall. I'm very aware that the train I was on was a more modern one, and there are other trains which aren't as modern, and quite often there's works on the line, so there's a replacement bus service in, in places, but I can only report on what I actually experienced. Which brings me to the third uh, option of transport to Osijek, apart from driving or blah blah car, and that is um, by air. Not so many people know that there are six scheduled flights a week from Osijek to Zagreb, twice a day on Monday, twice a day on Wednesday, and twice a day on Friday. And they're funded by the taxpayer at a quite enormous cost, actually. We'll come to that in a second. And uh, operated by a company called Trade Air uh, through the PSO Public Service Obligation, where um, less popular routes are funded, uh, subsidised by the government. And for some reason, uh, Osijek to Zagreb has come, un come under this. And just to give you an idea of the cost of this compared to all the other subsidies, here's something from an article when I did the flight uh, two years ago. The value of the new PSO contracts has not been disclosed. Under the previous deal, Croatia Airlines received 11.4 million euros in annual compensation for its domestic services. The largest amount, 4.2 million euros per year, went towards maintaining flights between Split and Zagreb, where the airline was remunerated some 22 euros per passenger. The value of Trade Air's PSO contracts amounted to 2.5 million euros a year, the largest share of the subsidies went towards the upkeep of the Osijek Zagreb service, 1.3 million euros a year, where the airline was compensated approximately 
599 euros per passenger. 599 euros per passenger. Amazing. And that's 1.3 million euros, which could perhaps be used elsewhere. Continuing with my article. I checked with some other airline sources who told me that these numbers were not accurate for the latest PSO contracts, but they were an indicator of the situation. An unnecessary waste of money on an unnecessary route, with so many more useful and deserving routes either underutilised or not existing. How about Osiek to Split, for example? As I arrived at Osiek Airport at 5.45 in the morning for the flight with just four passengers, the cafe was open, as was the souvenir shop. How many flights are there from Osiek today, I asked. Just two, including this one. The cafe went unvisited, the souvenir shop ignored. Total ticket sales mustered just €120. I am sure somebody somewhere knows why we have this flight for over seven years now, and maybe one day someone in authority will question its use and see how better to spend the money uh, to better serve Osiek. So there we go. Bus, train or plane. Which one would you do and why?